from NBC News, this is Today with Matt Lauer and Savannah Guthrie, live from Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza. And now to a story that raises the question, should one mistake define your life? It's the story of a local TV news anchor in Tucson, Arizona. It's actually a woman I happen to know. I worked with her for years. But four years ago, I'm former KVOA anchor Martha Vasquez made a terrible split-second decision after feeling the pressures of aging in a career that puts a premium on youth and beauty. She has never spoken out about this experience in a TV interview until now. For 35 years, Martha Vasquez was the queen of Tucson, Arizona. Being from here gives me a special connection to the stories we cover in Southern Arizona. Respected, trusted, beloved. I experienced this firsthand working with her at local station KVOA early in my career. Did you love being a news anchor? I actually loved the responsibility of informing people. For me, it was kind of a job that I felt like I was born to do. When you're in the public eye, people expect you to always be a certain way. How was, how did you manage that? You know, one of the things that I was known for when I was on the air is for my big smile and my hearty laugh. <laughs> and uh, I, I did that every day. I put that on every day, even when I wasn't laughing or smiling inside because I knew that that was my job. But the wear and tear of a career in the public eye began to take its toll, and Martha became fearful of losing that job she so loved. We all know that there's a shelf life for anchor women in, in our business. I remember saying to myself, I'm never going to stick around that long so I can start to be depreciated. I'm going to leave before they start edging me out. I, I didn't. I didn't do it, and I wish I had. So that brings us to February 2012. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that day, what happened? I had been very depressed about what was going on at work. So I went to the mall just and I bought a pair of shoes. I shopped around, got some stuff. And then I, um, I took a blouse, I took a top. And I walked out and the store guard came after me and he said, did you know that you have that in your bag? And at that point, I guess I could have said, oh my God, do I? Oh, I meant to pay for it. I bought these other things, but it just slipped my mind. But I said to him, yes, I do know that it's there. He said, were you going to pay for it? I said, no, I don't think I was. And, um, and so that, there began my nightmare. And it was. Immediately, news reports of Martha's shoplifting incident were everywhere. That following Monday, she was asked to resign. Why do you think that you acted out in that way? It doesn't seem your character no. at all. I think that I just wanted to stop the madness. I wanted to stop my unhappiness, and I didn't know how to do it myself. I think I knew deep down in my heart that if I shoplifted something, you know, just like any other crime, you would lose your job. So instead of saying goodbye to KVOA and having a lovely farewell and doing it the right way. That's the way I did it. And I will regret that till the day I die. Martha fell into a deep depression, not leaving her home for months, not even getting off of her couch. Depression is this heaviness, this feeling like hopelessness. It, like there's no solution to your problem. Like you might as well just end it all. Did you feel suicidal? I, I thought about it. I thought about it because I thought that um, my daughter would be better off without me. My husband would certainly be better off without me because he could find somebody that wasn't a, a shoplifter. But, and this is all going on in my head. Finally, at her husband's suggestion, the family moved from Tucson to Washington State. She sought help from a psychiatrist and eventually a hypnotherapist. It gave me back my self-esteem it helped me to forgive myself. And that's the piece of the puzzle that I had not yet been able to put together. When I see you before me, you are the Martha I've always known, full of light and joy and the big smile and the big laugh. Do you feel that this process is what helped you get that back? I do. It was the spark that had gone dark in my life. 
Now, four years later, Martha is back in her hometown of Tucson, Arizona, looking forward to opening a hypnotherapy franchise of her own. I was either going to go home with my tail tucked between my legs, or I was going to go home and show people that what happened to me can happen to anyone. That it was a mistake, that we all make mistakes, that one bad chapter does not end a story. That was chapter seven. I'm now on chapter eight and nine and moving toward chapter whatever. What a great story, and she, yeah. I think, will give so many people courage, perhaps, to do something that they yeah, haven't it, wanted to do. You know, it's unusual circumstances, yeah. but I think a lot of people can relate to not dealing with things that right. might be happening mm -hmm. inside, yeah. acting yeah. out in a way that would be unexpected even to them, and I think, most importantly, she shows a graceful way back, and what we was, wish her the best. Yeah. What was that like for you, somebody you grew up watching, to sit across and talk to her like you know what, I, I, Martha and I, not only did I watch her growing up in Tucson, then we were colleagues and we worked together and we stayed friends. And I know when this happened and it was an all in the headlines, you know, mm -hmm. I tried to reach out to her and, you know, she, it was just so hard. But I think the message that, that she received was that, you know, you're not defined by one thing. Right. Yeah. Your friends will always love you. And I'm very, very proud of her. Well, it's great that she's doing so well now. Yes. Because that yeah. story, she seems so nice. She deserves a second chance and yeah. a new opportunity. and. And now that's, you know, chapter eight and nine are going well. Yeah, exactly. Good lesson not to judge someone on their worst day. Uh, yeah, really. Right? right? Right. May we all not be judged that way. Yeah. Especially Come, Willie. Yeah. <laughs> I knew you were going to yeah. Yeah. Coming up that next. That was a bad day, though. It was. Yeah.